Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jane Schodel. I'm the lead programmer for the Special Presentations Program, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this world premiere screening of Catherine Called Birdie, directed by Lena Dunham. I would like to thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net backslash vote. And we would like to thank Prime Video and Amazon Studios for providing us with this film. Thank you very much. <laughs> Director Lena Dunham is perhaps best known as the creator of Girls, a television series. Let's shout out for Girls. Yeah. A television series that, during its six-year run, won two Primetime Emmy Awards, a BAFTA Award, and a Writers Guild of America Award, among many other accolades. Her feature films include 2010's Tiny Furniture, Sharp Stick from earlier this year, and of course, tonight's film, which has been adapted from the best-selling novel by Karen Cushman. The film stars Bella Ramsey, Andrew Scott, Joe Alwyn, Sophie Okanedo, Isis Hainsworth, and Billy Piper. <laughs> Personified in the delightful, impish brashness of the title character as portrayed by Bella Ramsey, Catherine Called Birdie is about a young teenager in the medieval ages who takes her future in her hand when she loses trust in what she perceives to be the somewhat incompetent adults around her. We're very pleased to have an opportunity to speak with our guests after the screening, but please join me in welcoming, in welcoming to the Toronto Film Festival, Lena Dunham. Hi. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna use my new medieval slang and I'm gonna say, hail fellows. Um, this is such a beautiful theater. I know that it's, it's just old enough to feel like it's appropriate for the ambience in the movie. Thank you so much to the Toronto Film Festival for having us. It's an honor. ...of a very long journey for this crusading cast and crew. First, I would love to bring out my undaunted producers, Joe Wallet, Eric Fellner... and my homie from day one, Tim Bevan. They all have... <laughs> Eric Fellner. <laughs> they have such pleasing British accents, I wish you could hear them right now, and at times they waded through literal mud to get this movie made. Thank you. It's also a thrill and an honor to be here with so many of the genius actors who hung on through a pandemic to make this being vulnerable at a time it was so easy not to be. Rita Bernard Shaw. Archie Renell. Isis Hainsworth. Sophie Okanedo, <laughs> Joe Alwyn, <laughs> Andrew Scott, <laughs> and Bella Ramsey. <laughs> okay. And now I'm going to throw out a few quick ish thank yous. I love these people so much. My producing partner, Michael P. Cohen, I'm sure you can all imagine some of his challenges when I tell you that I am the first person that he speaks to every morning. Um, my editor, Joe Klotz, who had to snip every single joke I ever made to keep this rated PG-13 and for the kids. My husband, Louis Felber, who created the soundtrack of pop music you'll hear today and in the process created the soundtrack of our lives. Thank you. My entire team, who are really more of my chosen family, Brian Lord, Maha Dekeel, Ali Trussman, Gretchen Rush, We Win, Kelly Bush Novak, Court Barrett, and Becca Sides. I would be quite literally nothing without you. <laughs> J 
Jeff Blackburn, Mike Hopkins, Jennifer Salky, Julie Rappaport, and the rest of the Amazon Studios and Prime Video team. You all fully uncaged this bird, and I could not be more thankful. So all these people's journeys have been long, yes, but my journey with Birdie has been even longer. She's been a voice in my head since I was 10, and it's been the good kind of voice, don't worry, although it can vary with me. Um, <laughs> like all great books, the one this film is based on was both an escape and a comfort object for me. It was a way out and a way in. From the moment I met Birdie, on the new release paperback shelf at the Barnes & Noble in New York in 1996, she represented both what I felt like as an odd and, I say this objectively, relatively friendless child, and also who I wanted to be. She is anxious but not scared. She is melancholy but not sad. And most of all, she is brave. Like every young woman having to grow up in a world that is demanding things she doesn't want to give, she has to be fight to be seen as who she is, and sometimes she has to fight to be seen at all. And Birdie has only just finally been replaced as my hero by Bella Ramsey. <laughs> I loved then and I love now that this book honors the intelligence of young women, of young people. And really, I just love its author, Karen Cushman, who, like Birdie, started as my hero and became my friend. Karen cannot be here tonight. Uh, her husband, Philip, died tragically last month. Birdie is a book chock full of men who don't necessarily sympathize with her plight. But Phil Cushman was the opposite in every way. Gentle, supportive, wise, a progressive therapist, teacher, and pillar of his community. Karen credits him with making her put the voice in her head, Birdie's voice, on the page, so we can really credit him with this movie. And this, our first screening, is dedicated to Philip Cushman. We will miss him very much. And we will see you, my medieval band of revelers, after the credits. Un grand merci. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Q&A. My name is Robin Citizen. I'm the director of festival programming and Cinematech here at TIFF. And I'll be moderating the Q&A. Um, please remember that all questions uh, should be about the film only, and um, I can barely see you up there, <laughs> so um, when you have questions, please raise your hand. I'll repeat them so everybody else in the audience can hear, um, and the people on stage can hear. Please help me welcome to the stage first, filmmaker Lena Dunham. <laughs> Thank you so much. What an incredible space. What an incredible audience. Um, I'm so thrilled to welcome back my cast. We have, um, we have, uh, I, what order am I going in? I'm so excited that I'm like trying to figure out, are Archie and Rita also back there? I just want to make sure I've got everybody. Bella, Andrew, Joe, Sophie, got it. We're going to bring out Isis. <laughs> we're gonna bring <laughs> we're gonna bring out Miss Sophie Oganeda <laughs> a queen among us we're gonna bring out Mr. Joe Alwyn Andrew Scott. And Bella Ramsey. And a thank you to Archie Renault and Rita Bernard Shaw, who are incredible and who are here with us. We're so lucky. Welcome. Um, Lena, we know that this is adapted from a very popular YA book. How many of you have read the book? Yes. But why was it important for you? Why was this a passion project for you to adapt this? Well, what I like about this book is it's, it's popular in specific circles. Like, if you meet a specific kind of person who was a weirdo in fifth grade <laughs> in 1996, they are so excited. And that's my target demo. But um, <laughs> uh, this was my favorite book from the time that I was 10. And 
there's so much about her voice, which is now so indistinguishable from Bella's voice to me. I'm sorry I created this strange divide between us, Bella. I thought I was doing everything right and I just kind of botched it, but I'm still thrilled with the order. Um, and so the book was just such a, um, it was such a diversion. I loved the way that it showed me a world that was so unlike my own and yet dealt with the same issues that felt like they befell all of us. And um, from the minute that I, I knew that I was going to make movies, I knew I wanted to make this movie. And I'm so lucky that Karen Cushman um, entrusted me with the story and that, you know, working title on Amazon made this possible. So... How did each of you come to the film in the cast? Should we start over there and make work our way down? Yes. Does this work? Okay, good. Um, I, uh, that's a good question. I got an audition tape sent through my agent, Georgie, um, and thought it was just immediately fell in love with it, the chaos of it, and it was just, it was so cool. Um, so then I just did a tape, and then, I oh know I didn't, I think I just met Nina, um, Nina Gold, the casting agent in London, I just had a meeting with her, and we read the script, and then it kind of happened from there, and then it got delayed because of COVID, and then in the end, we, we made it. I know, at one point, I had to FaceTime Bella and sort of silently try to figure out if she'd grown like three feet during COVID. <laughs> And I was like, this feels strange, but I just like remember FaceTime and being like, nope, we're all good, carry on. <laughs> Still exactly the same height. <laughs> well, we love your height, we love everything about you. Andrew? Well, six people turned it down. <laughs> 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 so Lena desperately on her knees. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, no, um, uh, Lena very kindly called me one day when I was in America and we had, um, uh, uh, a brilliant conversation. I, I, you can probably tell from the film that the film to me is like um, uh, Lena it, it personified. It's so she's the most joyful, generous, naughty, inventive, <laughs> brilliantly talented, wonderful human being. And um, uh, I just want to say congratulations. That guy. And so. Um, so we had that um, just a hysterical and wonderful conversation about about this 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 character, and um, I was I was delighted to and say you yes. Really trans. I mean, I have to say that in the book, the character is much more brutish and much more sort of like traditional sort of machismo. He's someone who would have a sword fight in the book, and you brought Wouldn't. all of his <laughs> could have a sword fight. And Andrew just brought all of this humor, and you came, you kind of brought this thesis that I feel like came to bear on the whole movie, which was this idea of like everyone here, like Birdie, is trapped in their own sort of tiny matrix within this society. And how do we have empathy for what each of these people think they need to do versus what they get to do? So that was, so Andrew just fixed it. <laughs> Mr. Alwyn? I was very lucky, like Andrew, just to be asked um, by Lena, and I think it was something that you'd been cooking for a long time. Um, I think we did a read-through for it in 2019, even, did. You were before like... uh, COVID shut it all down. But all those qualities that you, you attribute to Lena are completely on point, and the most amazing thing was seeing Lena and all of, that, all of that enthusiasm roll into these small towns in Wales and take over little villages and storm through the mud and scoop up chickens and just uh, Shropshire wasn't ready for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe. I feel so seen. <laughs> I love these people. And Sophie was someone I'd, wanna, I'd wanted to work with you for such a long time. Oh, thank you very much. Same to you, but I, uh, I just got the, um, you sent me a lovely letter with this wonderful script, and uh, you said, just come along, and have some fun, and you get to marry Joe. <laughs> 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 so <was> like, okay. <laughs> and uh, also got to work with some of my favorite actors that I've wanted to work with for a long time, as well as you, so it was a joy. <laughs> I love, there was poor Sophie and Joe, that wedding scene, which then went into the wedding banquet, was so cold. We had to VFX out people's breath because you can't bring a heater into these historic locations. So they're in these costumes and 
It looks like it's all fun and games, but they're sitting there with these hot water bottles just shivering, trying to say their lines through chattering teeth, and they, I would have just gone home. I would have gone home. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And Isis, you came to our, to our, you were at our first table read. Yes. Yeah, I was. I was really shocked that I had been asked. Alice is a very different character to ones that I normally play. I'm not used to playing the, the pretty girl. <laughs> That's quite exciting. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's lovely, but there's no way I'll be asked to do the movie. And then I was, and it was the <laughs> biggest joy. I couldn't believe it. So well, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. You have, like, um, I love how in this movie you just exude full Snow White energy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I'm going to turn it over to the audience. Any questions? Yes, in the front. <laughs> Andrew, you've had a very versatile career. Um, hot priest comment. Uh, <laughs> what drew you to uh, this role? Um, well, uh, one of the conversations that Lena and I had at the very beginning was um, that when you've um, sideline women and uh, in any society you also um, mess up with some of the men too and so this is a character I, I think it's more interesting that one of the ways we kind of developed the, the father character was that, that that he suffers from having to be sort of macho and that, that, that actually there's a lots of different types of men as well um, and so to try and make them I think what's interesting in families is that sometimes the ones that clash the most are the ones that are actually the most, most similar. Um, uh, so um, it was to try and bring a little bit of, of, of complexity to it. And, uh, and uh, I, I really, it was to work with, um, with Lena, who, who has made some just extraordinary work. That's one of the reasons I was so thrilled. And, um, and it was just amazing to support um, Bella, who's just the most extraordinary heroine, um, uh, and uh, I think audiences are going to go crazy, go crazy for you. So um, that's that's really why why I want to get involved. Yeah, and I've been saying it all over, but now he's he's hot medieval dad, and we can't change it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, over there in the back. The f fellow birdie fourth, fifth grade reader. We, I know so much about you already. <laughs> Just so everyone could hear, um, in the credits, it showed that Bella had written some of the songs that the character sang, so how did that come about? Um, well, Lena found out that I sang and played guitar and wrote songs. Um, and there was, we just had a conversation. You were like, maybe you could sing one of the songs for the soundtrack. I was like, okay, yeah, that might be cool. And then you had the idea for me to write one, um, which I was very into that idea. So just like in my hotel room while we were filming, like the weekend or something, I just started trying to write something from like the sort of about the show, about the movie. And um, then I kind of wrote a bass song and then Lewis, um, Lena's husband and music person for the film, <laughs> uh, um, like supported me with it and um, helped develop it into a song cool enough to be a part of the soundtrack. Um, so you heard a little snippet, snippet of it when I was releasing the birds at the end. Um, but yeah, it was like su such a cool opportunity to be able to do that. And thank you to Lewis for, for really helping me make it into something and Lena for asking me to do it. Well, thank you. And another thing to know is that Bella also wrote the song, lyrics and music that she sings to the suitors. Yes. <laughs> I wrote you three versions. She wrote three versions. <laughs> that's the one. I mean, her song that she wrote about the film that's on the soundtrack is beautiful, but that one she sings to the suitors is 
so important. And the one that we didn't include was about, which one did we end up not putting in? Was, there was a verse you did that was about someone in a dragon in the privy. Did that make it? That's there. I was peeing while that was happening. I'm f I forget which one we included and which one we didn't. Yeah, the dragon in the privy. I do remember that one. She also wrote one. There's the one you see. There's the one she also wrote an entire story about a dragon who goes to the privy, and it was deeply imaginative. <laughs> and I'm gonna option it okay. and make a film of it. <laughs> Look for the soundtrack. Um, Isis and Bella, your your friendship is at the core of this film, and your rapport feels very authentic. So, what did you do to kind of build that chemistry with each other on set? Oh. <laughs> I mean, Bella, when I first met Bella, we were doing a scene together in the Rose Garden that we ended up refilming later, I remember. And I was just so struck by how young you are and how, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. How fucking incredible <laughs> you are. <laughs> like, really. Like, this is Bella's <laughs> amazingness. Um, and really, I think we just sort of hit it off on the first bit, and then you're so good, and it just made me go, oh, I need to be really fucking good. <laughs> you were already really fucking good. Thanks. You were great. And like, I remember when we met, and we'd met at the table read before that, and then in rehearsals that we had in that little room yes. in um, Working Title Studios in London, and we just got on. Um, it's just so cool, and it seemed like just, just so down to earth and so talented. And we just, yeah, we just got on, didn't we, straight away? And then it was so that friendship that we had in the sh in the film very much reflects real life. And yeah, it was a, it was so cool to to have you on set. I love working with you. I want to work with you forever. Thanks. Let's do that. And I love Sounds how you cool. two capture that energy of when you have a best friend when you're a young woman and you just want to do everything with them. Like there's almost, you almost want to marry them because you just can't imagine ever wanting to spend a second with anybody else. And that how as you get older, there's so many factors in play that can cleave that apart. And I thought you two played that so beautifully. Still makes me emotional. Yes. We only have time for one more question. Um, yes. Can you share something about your process from reading the book to making the movie, perhaps uh, one big decision you had to make? Yeah, well, I think a, a big, my process from, I had read the book so many times and it was in some ways so a part of my DNA. And it's funny, because then you make a movie and you go over it so many times and that becomes a part of your DNA. So now it's almost become impossible for me to remember what Karen originally wrote, what I added, what it's all become this kind of braid of birdie. But I will say that the end of the book deviates pretty strongly. Um, the end of the movie deviates pretty strongly from the book. And that was a big decision because I revere the book so much, but had to make a decision ultimately that felt more cinematic. And also I felt like the audience, the, the end of the book is a little bit more downbeat. Birdie's in a little bit more of a compromised situation. And I just felt like I could not put the audience through falling in love with Bella for two hours and then put leaving her in a place where we were afraid for her. And so that was a, that was a shift, but luckily I had the blessing of the author and the blessing of everyone around me. And I'm, and I'm ultimately so grateful for how all of these guys played it. Um, yeah, thank you for asking. Thank you all so much. Thank you for coming. These, these people. Thank you so much. Thank you.